is grounds for termination. Breaking this rule, breaking this policy is grounds for termination. Um, and have that on every single, so when I hand out a, 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 a employee guide, an employee manual, it's not one thick book. It's here's our social media policy. Here's our sexual harassment policy. Here is our Hello, Chef Marcus Giuliano here, and I'm your chef on a mission. Today's mission is how to terminate an employee properly. Now, please don't take this as legal as legal advice. Um, I'm just gonna give you guidelines on what I do. Um, it's proven to work for me. I'm in the state of New York. Different states may vary, different states do vary. But here's what I do, being 30 years in the industry and how I cross my I's and dot my T's. So here's a specific comment from somebody on one of those Facebook forums on properly terminating an employee. Here's the comment, or the post. Need advice on firing an employee? This person has three write-ups, three write-up reports for other incidents and has been caught twice giving away free food. Once to another employee and once to his friend. Tonight I caught him giving away free drinks to a customer. He's not the best server, he's very friendly, he's a good talker but inefficient and not a team player. How do I go about firing him in a legitimate way to avoid any legal repercussions? We're a family-owned sole proprietor. All write-ups, all write-up reports are signed and a separate doc is signed with a very specific clause that says they are subject to immediate termination after three write-ups. So, being in this business 30 years, I will tell you that I've gone through my fair share of, 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 um, what do you call this? Um, fighting unemployment, um, even even unemployment hearings. I've even had to do unemployment hearings where um, I would say the employee um, does not get unemployment. They were denied unemployment. The employee says, no, no, I'm entitled to unemployment. And then they would fight it. I had one employee who fought it and fought it again. And three times I went to a hearing for one employee. I ended up winning the case um, because every time it just kept getting delayed because the employee didn't have all they needed and this and that. And it just kept getting delayed. However, Here's what I've learned through all my 30 years and, and, and through these hearings, because I got dr I get drilled at these hearings, right? Because the person from New York State like looks at every possible angle uh, in a way that the to represent the employee here. And and of course they, they represent the employer, but when they cross when they cross examine this and that, they really, really put a fine comb and really ask me some hard questions. So here's the one thing I've learned. Um, what this person is doing is right. You need to document everything. But you can't, in New York State, once I fired an employee for doing something that I had not previously documented, but the person had a lot of write-ups, and it was not their last write-up, but it wasn't for that specific cause. So make sure that whatever that specific cause is, you're writing up for multiple times on that cause. But here's the deal. It needs to start with your actual hire package. When you give out a a staff manual, and we give out a staff manual and they sign all these different clauses, like cell phone clause, this, this, and this, um, social media clause, um, we have all these different policies, and they're all separate pages. So they read them and they initial them and they sign them. You have to state in every single one of those policies that you may be terminated after one warning, and that's it. You, you may, not, may not even need a warning, but the, breaking this cause, is grounds for termination. Breaking this rule, breaking this policy is grounds for termination. Um, and have that on every single, so when I hand out a, 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 a employee guide, an employee manual, it's not one thick book. It's here's our social media policy. Here's our sexual harassment policy. Here is our late policy. Here is our uniform policy. Here is this policy. Here is that policy. They're all separate policies that all need their separate attention. And every single one of those policies says, if this policy is broken, you are grounds for termination. And that's just it, okay? So now when you go to a hearing with the state and they say, well, was this employee war warned that, you know, smoking a cigarette within 20 feet of the door or smoking a cigarette at all on their shift is grounds for termination. You say, 
here. I have the document that they signed on our smoking policy that says specifically on our smoking policy that if they break this policy, they are grounds for termination right here and there. So anything that you can possibly figure out along the way is what you do. Now, you can keep, now I'm, we've been doing this for years, especially my restaurant here, it's been in business for 15 years, so we have all this stuff uh, 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 filled in. Um, you can go to certain sites and pull up downloads for templates and all this kind of stuff. Um, my newsletter has all this kind of stuff and it has access to all this kind of stuff on my monthly newsletter. Um, but make sure again, you're following the laws in your state, find out some, go to your, um, in people who do your paychecks, uh, employee management. Um, there's a lot of companies out there that do this. Uh, you can download laws, you can do your own research. You can actually call the labor department in each of these states and get specific guidelines and get samples and ask other people that have been in the restaurant industry for a long time in your state what they're doing. Now, again, this is kind of legal advice, so don't take my advice and don't take somebody else's advice. Do your own research, but I'm just giving you tips that have actually worked for me. So the more things you can document, the more things you can lay out, the more things, just the paper trail, paper trail, paper trail, paper trail, paper trail, paper trail, to do this. And remember, if you if you if you wrote somebody up two times for smoking, and then all of a sudden you fire them for being late because that's the third write up, you might have a problem in that state. In New York State, you would have that problem because I've never given that employee a warning on being late before. The state wants to see that I've given them, you know, adequate or warnings or have it documented that if you're late, you're going to be fired. Not if you've smoked two times and you're on your second write-up and your third time. You're, the third write-up has to follow for the same thing. See what I'm saying? If you give them two warnings, you can fire them after after one. You know, because simply if that's what you state in your in your in your in your workers and your in your in your hand guy, if that's what you're stating in your policies, hey, one time and you're out. That's it. Then that's it. But just make sure that they understand that right up front, one. One time is enough to get terminated on all these different subjects, and you can put a blanket clause in um, in your in, in, in your thing as well. After you do the specific clauses, breaking any one of these policies in this manual is grounds for termination. Have them sign that portion too, so they know. So when you go to a hearing, you can say, "Well, they also signed this portion," and then I would also say in your termination, your corrective action forms, that you know, breaking. Please review your. I've reviewed my my employee manual and I understand that breaking any of the policies and procedures is grounds for termination from here on out. Have them sign something like that in the corrective action form as well so you're just covering your bases. Then when the judge says to you, well, were they warned that you well, not only were they warned, but they signed it. They signed it in my in my policy, they signed it in the corrective action, and now it's here again signed here. And then you could think, well, gee, I've, I've given them adequate warning. So that's that's the situation. So this person's right. They've, they've given a lot of write-ups. They're following procedures. But again, when you're dealing with this kind of stuff, you have to be so exact, so exact. And like I said, I've never lost a, uh, a hearing. I've only been to several hearings, a few, a handful of hearings. I've never lost any one of them because I'm pretty good at documenting all this stuff. But, you know, if they were to hire an attorney, um, uh, uh, to fight the case with them, they're really going to go in and nail you with every possible thing that you would never think of. Then you have to hire an attorney, right? You have to hire an attorney to fight it back. And at that point, you just take unemployment. Just put the mark on my unemployment and just take the unemployment, right, at that point. So be very, very careful. Dot your I's, cross your T's, document, document, document. Thanks for watching.